Hello, and welcome to On Point. I'm Sofia Gutierrez. What do Gwen Lane and Ali Levine have in common? They are both founders of popular blogs who have made a living influencing their followers. Both of these bloggers have managed to hit over 50,000 followers. According to Software Finder, there are more than 400 million blogs out on the internet as of 2018. These influencers use websites as well as social media platforms to express themselves and their mission. They talk about their passions, including lifestyle, fashion, beauty, and sports. Bloggers between the ages 21 and 35 dominate the blogging world, making up more than 53%. Companies work with influencers on collaborations and brands to help promote their products. A successful blogger is able to motivate consumers to purchase items from specific brands. We talk to CSUN students to see how they follow up with bloggers and about what keeps them on their page. Um, yeah, so I have a few on Instagram. And I, I know a few um, oh. artists in my classrooms, my clear mage and other schools. But um, since like, I'm a college student, I'm both, but I wish I could buy them all. But um, it makes me want to do the exact same thing, what they're doing, and that gets me motivated as well. I play golf, so um, like especially Tiger Woods, I look up to him. Um, so if, like, if he endorses something, I, don't know, I feel like it, it that makes it cooler in a sense. Um, and I'd say that's probably true for a lot of um, products that you know famous people endorse, stuff like that. Their famous fans want to look like them, you know, wherever they wear stuff like that. Well, I follow Kylie, she just had a baby. <laughs> and then just Chloe and lines like for kids and Disney, of course. <laughs> the question is, what makes some bloggers more successful than others? Influencers have to be creative in order to stand out in a cyberspace full of similar content. There are several ways that people can try to make their mark in the blogging world. On Point's Alexis Carfano has more on the story. Thanks, Sophia. Welcome. Today I'm joined by Professor Benjamin Davis, a professor of digital journalism and the creator of the Digital Media Pyramid. Now, Professor Davis, what advice would you give to those who want to start a blog? Uh, first of all, figure out what the leading edge technology will be three, four years from now. And um, if you use traditional standards, you'll be left in the dirt within three, four years because 5G is coming along. Uh, everything's going to change in terms of how people access their uh, information via the, the smartphone. Uh, you do want to be aware of the coming technology. You want to know how to create stickiness to your blog. You have to have your own personal schedule carved out well so you can continue to feed the beast that uh, you may have heard of the blog, The Daily Beast. That's what it is. You have to feed it daily or on a regular basis. It's going to take up a lot of your time. So you have to be prepared uh, for that as well as knowing what the, uh, the market will take, um, what type of ads you can create to support your blog. Uh, most importantly, though, is back to the 5G. A lot of the bloggers that exist today will be left in the dust in about five years if they don't make the adjustment to 5G. Right now, everything runs pretty much on 4G. Even though you'll see 5G on your phones and you see advertisements saying that um, a service is 5G, it really hasn't been rolled out. Uh, it just started coming out in June of 2018 and it'll be out in full bloom within about two or three years. That means that everything on your smartphone moves instantaneously. And it, with content moving that quickly, you have to be able to get people to stick around. It'll be so easy for them to leave. So you want good, compelling uh, information, good content, and uh, you want to be able to take advantage of the new technology that's coming along. Now, going along with what you mentioned, how can people get all of their viewers to stick on their blog? What makes them stand out? Would it be subject or style? Uh, I believe it's going to, it has to be, style has a little to do with it. If the eyes feel good, they'll stick around. You want their eyeballs to feel good. There's color schemes, photographs, <clears throat> but I think content at the end of the day is going to be uh, what will make them not only come but stay and they want to be able to trust you. If they trust you and you, meaning you, they trust you will make them laugh, they trust you're going to inform them, that's all part of stickiness. Uh, but the content hopefully is something that they can't get in a Google search real quick. If they get something on a Google search and it, it comes in you know rows and rows of, say, of stories that covers your blog, 
why go to your blog? You want your blog to have something that's fairly unique, uh, whether it's, you know, young dads uh, with children who, who will keep them up all night blog. Something that's, with, there are thousands and thousands of bubbles out there, internet bubbles, where people with special interests like to talk to like-minded people. You have a blog that covers that type of issue. Um, you build out from that. That's the best way to keep off the competition if you're within an internet bubble. Absolutely. Now you touched upon this a little bit, but I want to go a little more in depth about it. What do you think are some key things that make a blog successful? I, I think, again, the, the, the sense that you're getting unique information that you can't get quickly in a Google search. Also, getting the sense that, I mean, this is hard. You wonder why someone needs to feel connected to a blogger, but if they can feel connected to you personally somehow, uh, if you make that leap, uh, that helps a lot. That's why writing, the way you write your blog is really important. Uh, people get the sense that they know you because of the way you write things, the way you present things, they'll stick around. Uh, the, the sense that they belong to something that's a community, so to speak, if your blog can convey that sense of community, you'll get them coming back. At the end of the day, it's always stickiness. And um, the more they like you, they'll stick around. Great. Now, also, a big part of the digital media pyramid is where you talk about ads. And ads are a big portion and very important part of blogs. So how can bloggers monotonize using ads? Um, I think the best thing for them to do is know their audience. Once you know your audience, what they like, give it to them in, in the, with the ads. As long as the ads don't interfere with your credibility, uh, you could end up using ads that um, are more uh, that, that more may uh, interfere with your objectivity. And that may not be the way, the best way to make money. I think the best way to go after ads is to find out what your audience really likes and gear the ads towards that and the trust factor. If you're going to sell them sneakers, they're going to expect you to sell them sneakers that are quality as opposed to sneakers from a company that paid you the most money. Uh, ads fall in with integrity when it comes to your blogs. How have companies and brands come to rely on social media to help promote their missions? Young people. They, they, they will go to young people to help promote. They go where the young folks are. They're the ones that spend the money. They're the ones that spend the money recklessly at that. Um, so they will go to the hottest blogger of the day, whoever that is, and uh, try to create another one after that. They also want to create new influencers. Um, they're always looking out for the next big influencer. Can they make the next influencer um, and build their, build their brand, build the brand within that influencer whenever they can. Great. Thanks so much for coming and speaking with me today, and we'll be back after this. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Uh, Miss Stevens, I just wiped malware off our system. Uh, people have got to stop clicking unsolicited email links and downloading free software unless it's from a trusted source. Sounds great. We need a data backup plan in a separate location in case we get hacked. We need to focus on making profits, not spending them.
Learn to protect yourself from ransomware. Welcome back. Today I'm with talented social media influencers Gwen Lane, the founder of TheLAGirl.com, as well as Ali Levine, a TV personality, new mom, influencer, and podcaster. Now, Gwen, the success of The LA Girl has allowed you to leave your corporate job and focus full-time on blogging. How were you able to do this? Well, I started uh, while I was at my job, and it was something that I was growing on the side, a side hustle, and I was able to do it by, you know, doing it in the mornings and during work sometimes, uh, after work and on weekends, and really working at it to transition to to it full time. And so it took me about two and a half years of doing that on the side until I was able to replace my income as a marketing director in the entertainment industry. And then I kind of knew that it was time when I was making more money in my side hustle in my business than at my job. Excellent. Now also, what are some steps that you think that bloggers can take to become a full-time blogger? So the first thing would definitely be figure out who you want to talk to and who you do you want to write for. Um, really getting clear on that audience was something that really helped me in the beginning and really sticking to that, um, that audience and kind of figuring out what their challenges are and how you can help them. I'm always talking about audience first um, because once you know who your audience is and you know what they want to hear from you, what, would, uh, what kind of content would resonate with them, and also you know what you want to be talking about in your content um, and so the first thing would be figuring out who your audience is and second what kind of content you should be putting out there and being consistent has been like the number one thing that has caused me to grow uh, to where I am now um, I feel like it's kind of like you have your own show and people are expecting to see you on Instagram and on stories and reading your weekly blog so being consistent as if you are you know having your own channel uh, in your own platform because that is what this is as a content creator, as an influencer, you have your own channel. And the third thing would be figuring out how you're going to monetize because in the beginning, um, you know, you're creating content, right? And you're just putting stuff out there, you're gaining an audience, but if you wanna do that full time and transition to it, you gotta figure out how to make money, right? Because how are you gonna pay the bills? How are you going to, you know, move and get out of your corporate job? So really having a plan in place, and you know, it's not gonna happen overnight. It's not an overnight thing. Again, it took me two and a half years. Um, I've seen people do it in a lot less time now uh, because there's a lot more opportunities, but um, really, finding your audience and getting clear on it, being consistent with your content and having a plan to monetize. Those are some great advice. Now for the both of you, what is a typical day like in the life of a social media influencer? I'll start with Ali. <laughs> I'm laughing, I'm like every day is different, especially with being a new mom. My schedule changes constantly. Um, but I would say as far as like a typical setup, Kind of like what Gwen was saying, you want to really get clear on who your audience is. So for me, it's like new moms, it's fashionistas, it's people on the go, it's entrepreneurs. So I always think about that when I'm going to create content, whether it's monetized or not monetized, what am I trying to say here? What is the message I'm trying to get across? And I decide that, you know, a few days before or a week before, depending on when I'm working with the product or what I'm shooting. And I start with that. So when I start my day, I know, okay, I'm going to create pictures around this, video content around this, this is what I'm gonna be speaking to, this is what the message that I wanna you know, go for, maybe I do some research on some quotes, I have like presets of course of my color palette so I go through and see like what aligns and what matches and I start with that and I start with just like the basic creation. Then once it's created, then that's when I kinda of get into like, okay, what am I going to say with this? Because for me, kinda of what Gwen was saying as far as like your audience, it's true, people turn to you as an influencer and you know, we both obviously take our influencer work 
work very seriously. And so when you do that, you really have to articulate your message truly to your audience and make sure they understand where you're coming from. So when I start to kind of draft out what I'm going to say, there's times where I'll write captions four or five times, and then I'll delete it, and I'm like, no, that's not construing really where I'm trying to go here. That's not striking that emotion that I feel in myself right now that I'm trying to get out there. So I think I, I kind of go from there, and then going back to what Gwen was saying with blogging, I if I'm going to put a blog behind it, it's like, what is the full story. I feel like Instagram and social media channels are kind of like that high right reel and it's kind of like that small little bit. So if you want to go get the full enchilada, you go on to your blog and read everything. So then I kind of think about like, okay, what's this full story going to lead me into and how am I going to keep their attention? So I want to stay on there and continue to engage and read. And then how am I going to prone questions or comments so I can continue to interact and engage this audience further? And that's kind of how I start each day with content and then of course it leads into like crazy you know more emails more phone calls more actual you know work that I have to do along with actual like live stories and everything I'm doing on my social media in between because like Gwen said people expect you to show up like when you don't post people will message you and say how come you weren't on today what were Are you, you doing <laughs> right exactly and I'm like oh I, I took a break I'm so sorry you know yeah. like but it's true it's because we're blessed to have that engagement but you really do have to think of it as a channel that you're continuously feeding and that's why they say content is king because it is. Yeah, so it goes to show how busy you guys are. So for Gwen, what is a typical day like for you? Well, I think part of the reason me and Allie probably work for ourselves because we don't want a typical day, right? Yeah, we don't, every day is we different. don't want to Absolutely. go in to yeah. the same place, the same office, same do our work, mm -hmm. right? And then um, there is no typical day for me. Yeah, like today, is, <laughs> today was like a podcast interview in the morning, some emails. I'm um, doing some pitching for my trip to Hawaii next week, and then this interview right here. And right. so, like, there's things that come up as a one-off, and then there's things that are more, um, more scheduled, just yeah. like content creation. That is we a good point. Time yes. for that. Um, you know, if there's photo shoots coming up, those are you know on different days mm -hmm. when you have your team, your photographer, right? Um, Everything set up. Yeah, and then there's if brand events and things like that. And I feel like that's what I love about it is not knowing and being <laughs> able to actually schedule around that. Yeah. Um, I actually love to, um, you know, put what's important. Like I love to travel and I love to go hiking. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, those are days that I block off and I don't schedule that time. So then, you know, there is some random Wednesday where I'm out in the mountain <laughs> and that's, it's a great thing to be able to do that. Um, but I do have a morning ritual and I start my mornings with meditation oh, and yoga yep. um, and I do some journaling and um, that has really helped me stay grounded and centered um, because it could be a really big you know, hustle and bustle mentality. Yes. There's always some going on. A lot of flows, yes. for sure. I was gonna say, I completely agree with that. In the morning, same thing. I try to, every morning start off, which is like three minutes of meditation on my app. Same with when I go to sleep at night. And my new thing I've been adding is um, every day in my like journal that I have, I write down five things that I'm grateful for that day. And so I remind myself when I go back to the journal each day, like what were those five things and why to like, again, give yourself that reality check, that balance and that grounding, because we do, we get swept up in everything there's a lot going on. And I think too, and I don't know about for you, but for me, like when I'm on social media, there's times where I feel myself get like so down and then so up because you're really in it. You know, you're interacting with all these people. It's exhausting. You can't really turn it off. And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, and you put your phone down and you just like feel this sigh of relief but then maybe you're drained because of whatever you're interacting with and again it's like this positive you know negative from social media I feel like and especially for us who are always in it and trying to always feed it you do have to have those moments where you create those rituals and you create those routines for yourself and that's a really good point because I've had to do that for myself especially as a new mom I've realized that like I no longer can be that as chaotic spontaneous person I have to have a schedule and routine so that my daughter can have a schedule and routine Otherwise, I don't get anything done. So I have to know in the morning, like, this is at least how I'm going to try to start. And I tell myself I'm going to set intentions versus an actual, like, routine and, like, this must be done. It's like this is the intention of these things to get done today. If not everything gets done, it's okay. Yeah. I'm going to forgive myself and give myself <laughs> grace, and I'm going to move on. And then the next day it's going to move to the next list. And I really, truly believe that when people give themselves that grace, no matter whether you're a mom or you're anyone, it's important because we all, there's so much going on nowadays we want to get everything done and it's just truly not always possible so it's like you said you give yourself that random mountain day like good for you I give myself that nap you know it's like you just do what you got to do to be able to reset and continue to be successful.
Absolutely. Yeah. Now, it goes to show that being bloggers and social media influencers, obviously for people who don't want to have the nine to five job, this works really well for them if they are interested in that kind of exciting lifestyle. Now, you guys mentioned that social media is very important in all that you do. So what platforms do you guys prioritize and why? Oh, uh, <laughs> I was so interesting because I had someone asked me this the other day. So uh, I would say as far as what I prioritize for platforms would be Instagram first, just because it really is like the leading platform, it, it, anyone you talk to, it's just where everyone goes. What's your Instagram? What's your handle? So Instagram first, always, I try to really focus on there. Then again, what I was saying with content, go back to my blog, try to see kind of where I was going with that post and relate it to my blog so people can then go read a further story and get more out of it. And then I try to tweet. I really do like Twitter. I feel like it's a little bit of an older space, but I was like one of the first OGs to Twitter like back in the day. So I still love it and feel like I get a lot of business that way. It's actually my more business friendly app, I would have to say. Uh, I think people are more, um, because it's quick conversations, it's just a different way versus Instagram. I feel like it's a continuous conversation. It's just different. And then I would say um, YouTube. And after that would be Facebook. And I used to feel like Facebook was more of a priority, but now, I don't know, I feel like I'm not getting as much traction for me personally on Facebook. And so I share things there, but maybe it's not as instantaneous as my other platforms. Oh, and, and Pinterest as well, I forgot about Pinterest. <laughs> Yeah, and Pinterest, you, Gwen? Pinterest is a huge traffic driver. Um, my priority has always been my blog, just because it's the channel that I own and can control. Um, but it is something that's weekly and more of a monthly, bi-monthly schedule. Uh, Instagram daily, every yep. single day, because it is where you know brands look at it. Um, you know that's where everyone is on a daily yeah. basis. People um, live there. <laughs> yeah, and like stories, I feel yes. like is overtaking the feed right now. Yeah. Um, so. Um, interesting you say that about Facebook. So I uh, focus on Facebook as well, but mostly on groups and not the page. That's a really good point. Yeah. More I get, of a networking totally. perspective. Yes. I get a lot of interaction in both of my Facebook groups, and it's a really fun place to for people to have conversations and talk about trends and things like that, um, and also like meeting up and doing events together too. And also for you guys, being influencers, you guys get a lot of opportunities to work with brands. Now, how do you go about that process and what's the decision-making process like for you guys? I'll start with Gwen. So for brands, there's two ways you can work with brands. You, they can either reach out to you directly or you can reach out to them. And a lot of influencers that are just starting out, I realize um, they sometimes like to wait and just wait and wait. And sometimes <laughs> that doesn't happen. And you kind of have to do the legwork of reaching out in the beginning. Beginning. And as you start growing, more and more brands Absolutely. will start reaching out to you. And then, then you'll be like <laughs> me and Allie who have to turn yeah. people away because there's too much going on and not everything might be a great fit. So for me, I always think about will the brand help my audience? Back to like audience first. Is this um, product something that's going to help my audience? Would my audience even be interested? I get some random stuff sometimes and I'm like, um, I would not use this personally. So I would not recommend it to someone else. So one, it has to be something that serves my audience. Two, it has to be something I actually personally like because I'm not an actress. So I can't <laughs> fake if something's great or not. Um, I have to test the product first too. And this has happened to me before where I had a product. Um, I said I was going to test it and it broke. And it was great that I did that before posting about it because I didn't want my, my audience to buy something and then be like, oh, well, you were recommended it and it broke on me. And so I've built that connection and trust with my audience for many, many years. And it's not worth um, losing that over a brand deal. Absolutely. And Ali, for you, what's the decision making process? Yeah, like? I absolutely echo what you say. And I was going to say, I love that you said that about testing, because for me, I tell that to everyone, like I must feel, touch, experience, wear, whatever it may be, so that I know, like, in my heart of hearts, I would either use this, I would either recommend it, I really like it. And it goes for my TV segments when I speak about brands monthly, or it's on my own Instagram, I've had my hands on it, you know, I've gotten to experience it before. And I always tell every brand that I work with, hey, send it to me, let me try it, let me experience it. If I'm into it, and I'm really excited about this, then in a week or two, we can talk about what we can actually do with it and what opportunities, you know, whether it be monetizing or putting it on certain channels, or for me when I do TV segments, talking about my TV segments, whatever it may be that makes sense. And I agree with you, it's the audience first. And I kind of look at my audience as like my friends, you know? It's like people have actually said, oh, you're my friend in my head. And I'm like, okay, I'll take it, you know? And it's like, I, I get that because social media has become this world where like you said, we feed them, 
We connect with them continuously and they feel like, I know you, Gwen, like this is what you do on a regular basis. I know your routine. And though they might not, may not be in your home with you, they do feel like they are with you. It kind of so, is like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think it's so important to really be humble about that and really realize that like no matter where you are in your influencer, you know, ship, that you have those relationships. And the reason you are an influencer is because of people that are following you and that they are checking you out to see what you're talking about, what's real, what's not real. And I think being authentic is just hands down the most important. Excellent. And also, Ali, I know that you are a new mom. You're handling your podcast, your blog. How do you make it all work out? And what advice would you give to those who want to follow in your footsteps? Okay. I laugh because a lot of people ask me this question of being, you know, new mom, all these hats I wear and everything. And I laugh because, again, it, to me, I just think transparency is just so much more relatable to people. And people, you know, are like, oh, my God, how do you do it all? And I'm like, yes, I definitely get everything done eventually, but not necessarily, you know, all in one order. And like Gwen was saying, you prioritize. So, like, some days, those are my social media days, and that's all I focus on. Other days, it's my podcast day, and I know I have four guests in a row, and that's what I'm focusing on. Everything else, unless it's, like, a true emergency, that's it. Like, they, fall, you know, it goes to the next day. And then, of course, my daughter is the main priority. So, honestly, I kind of schedule around her. Like, I have podcast guests when she naps because I know that, like, there won't be, like, sound <laughs> issues. Or if I know I have someone coming over to, like, be a mommy's helper to help me, then I'll have guests over. But it's really, I've just had to come to this realization of, like, I can get everything done, but it's going to be in a much more complicated fashion. And I have to be okay with that and I have to just know that this is a very fleeting time and she's only going to be little for so long and so I have to just kind of figure it out and create schedules as much as I can and go with it. I mean she's here with me right now. My intern has her and you know I'm making it work but I think that's the key with anything. You just have to have the confidence to make it work. Be transparent in your work that you are you know, just working through it and doing what you need to do. For anyone that, you know, is looking to advice, like I have so many moms who reach out to me and they're like, you do so much, how do you do it? And I'm like, listen, there's days where I get everything done and I feel like super mom. Right. There's days where nothing gets done and the house looks like a bomb blew up and I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do today? You know, so Absolutely. it's, I would say the tips would just be to really remain confident in what you're doing, really you know, give yourself that, that grace and transparency to make sure you're really clear on your goals and what you want to get done and be clear with who you're working with to know what you need to get done and just prioritize and be okay with that not everything will happen in that moment. Great. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you guys so much for speaking with me and coming along. You're welcome. It was fun. Yeah, thanks <laughs> for having us. Thank you for watching On Point. You can follow us on social media at CSUN On Point. You can hear us on KCSN 88.5 FM on Sunday mornings at 5.30. You can watch us on Santa Clarita Valley Television on Sunday afternoons at 5.30 and on LA 36 at 8.30 Thursday nights. For all of us here at On Point, I'm Sofia Gutierrez.